Imagine now that it's spring. You take a huge breath of the fresh air outside, enjoying the slight bit of warmth that creeps into the earth as we approach a brighter, lighter, warmer kind of weather. But something gets in your way. A tickle in the back of your throat, an itch in your nose, and all of a sudden you're sneezing. All around you, everywhere, there's pollen. There's dust. There's little specks, particulates, things that sneak into your lungs, your eyes, your nose, and remind you that even in this glorious time of year, we are still human. Why, then, do our renders not also contain dust? This is what we're going to be discussing today. I have made a blender project that I dub the Definitive Allergy Spawner, which is a all-purpose dust setup. I used it on a previous project where we recreated a physical lens from a Leica camera in Blender, and we used this dust to make that render feel a little bit more realistic and a little bit more nostalgic. I'm going to upload this project to Gumroad for free if you would like to pay for this, I greatly appreciate it. It does take me a quite a bit of time to make these projects, but in the future, I'll be looking to turn this into a plugin. I don't know how long that will take or when that will arrive, but that is on the horizon. What we're going to be doing today is a brief overview of some of the features and some of the exposed parameters, just so you understand how to use this dust. And then after that, it's all on you guys use it however you like. So first of all, we have a couple things going on here. There is the geometry node setup and the geometry node setup is what controls the dust particulates. Right now I'm using cycles, but the dust also works in EV. What we start off with is a cube. This is the volume. What you're going to do is take this volume and place it in any one of your scenes encompassing the area where you'd like dust to spawn inside this volume. We actually have the dust itself. And as you can see, there's quite a bit of it. It's going to be a little bit hard to see at the moment just because of the current shader. There's two modes, volumetric dust, which is the hyper realistic dust. And I essentially made this to look as realistic as feasibly possible within the boundaries of not getting excessive on performance. And then there is the non volumetric dust. The non volumetric dust looks OK. It doesn't look as good, but if you put depth of field on your scene and the dust particles are small enough, they will still read as dust quite well. So this is a great option if you're worried about performance. Right now, this is cycles. If we even play this back, you can see that this dust is animated as well. So it'll float around your scene. The dust animation is quite simple. None of this is particles. It's all geometry nodes. So you can change the noise pattern that animates the dust if you like. The dust density reduce or increase to change the number of particles in the air. Currently within the geometry node setup, there are six different particle types. You're welcome to add more particle types or remove them as you see fit. But this dust density value multiplies each one of these particles independently. So because we have six different particle types and dust density of a thousand, we're going to have roughly 6,000 particles of dust in the atmosphere. All of these dust particles are made procedurally in the geometry nodes as well. I've made a geometry node setup that essentially makes a bunch of random spaghetti, which is what I imagine would be a little hair or thread or pieces of a little stringy dust. We also have these rock type dust, the larger specks, pollen, things like that. All of these are distributed within this cube, gets converted into a volume. I scatter points within the volume and then I instance the particles on the points. So that's all that's happening. This section down here is the animation and essentially the particles will rotate along the path they're following. So if they're going in a straight line and they curve to the left, the rotation of the particle will also curve to the left. You're welcome to change the animation to look however you like. If you're familiar with geometry nodes, I will say that this setup is a little bit expensive for animating. 
and I have not optimized it to be used with animated scenes, especially if you're using the volumetric mode. This will increase your render time substantially. The other controls are quite simple. You can change the particle size. All of the particles scale uniformly just because I like how they look like this. And I think the ratio of particle scale from one particle to another particle is really good. And so they scale uniformly. The voxel resolution is the resolution of the volumetric dust particles. If I were to turn this down to something like eight, you're going to get a lot lower resolution on the particles. It's not going to matter so much on the larger particles, but it will matter on the stringy particle. As you see here, the stringy particle is gone. We can try uh, 32. Now you can see the stringy particle is sort of appearing, but it's chunky and it's blocky and it's kind of hard to see. So you can take this up to like 128. It starts to get a little bit laggy, but you'll have really high fidelity, stringy looking dust particles. Again, 64 seems to be a pretty good in between where you can make out the shape of your particles and you're not losing too much performance. Schnell factor. Schnell factor is the speed at which your particles move during the animation. We up the Schnell factor and the particles move faster. That's all it is. It's pretty easy. This is V1 of the dust system. More changes and updates to the dust system are coming in the future. All right, that's the geometry nodes. Let's get into the shaders. So what you have here is three different shaders. The volumetric dust shader is relatively simple. Okay, so we have our dust, we have our color, which is white. So this just multiplies the density of the dust itself. And if we turn it all the way up, you can see the dust becomes very, very, very solid. If we turn it down, the dust becomes much less solid. There is also a noise texture that is being subtracted from the dust to make it a little bit less uniform. Moving on to the mesh dust. This is what shows up when we disable volumetric dust. This shader is slightly more complicated. Essentially, we have what is more or less a Fresnel shader. We are getting the dot product of the camera vector versus the normal vector of each of these dust particles. And we are fading them out as they fall off the space, as the, the plane gets steeper from the camera. And we're doing this because it makes them feel a little bit less rigid. That's one of the issues I had with the non-volumetric one is it was a little bit rigid. And then you can increase the intensity of the particles using this value here if you want, as well as the color and just about all the other normal settings you have. This still looks good. Like I said, if you increase your depth of field with these particles, they look pretty much just as good as the volumetric. I reserve the volumetric for hyper realism. Atmosphere. You can play with this setting. All we're doing here is increasing the density of the atmosphere by a very small amount. You can turn this off if you don't want any atmosphere to interact with your scene. But I think it looks quite nice when you have a little bit of atmosphere in the scene to filter light through. But play with the setting. Feel free to turn it off. This is where it is. Today's video is a short one. I apologize for taking so long to get this dust set up available. It had slipped my mind to make this video as I got distracted by some other videos that I thought would be really cool instead. But now this is here and I will update it in the future. Currently this works with Blender 4.2 and I believe Blender 4.0 as well. Yeah, enjoy it. And I will see you in the next video. Peace out.